And we are live on Oz Property Investors. We bring the big names, and tonight we're going to be having the big fun. I don't know about. I've got a small name, so we're not bringing the big names tonight. It's just, it's a small name. Jeff and Joe. They're both both small names, but we've got we've got big hearts. Three letters. That's all you need. Don't be yeah. greedy with your lettering. Don't not, have too not many Joseph letters. And not Jeffrey. I mean, gee, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, how you going anyway, Joe? What's 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 cracking, man? Oh, mate, I'm fantastic. I uh, I've been data deep diving today um and over the past week about some of these locations and i know you have as well so we've kind of lifted the lid um in the laboratory a little bit of how we do property research it's, so um it's, it's on mean, like donkey kong so to speak i'm wearing my donkey <laughs> kong yeah yeah it's, he's bashing up bowser so very low speed. yeah anyway so i'm loving yeah. the there's heaps of people in there's already 35 people watching there's so many people like there's Jesus, been so this, this is this is going to blow the roof this is going to be the biggest session probably we've ever done so throw us drop us a like throw us a comment um oh, and, and and questions as well and if you see a gold nugget i know joe loves his nuggets so mick nuggets he's, nugget. he's bought the nuggets from Macca's. so no anyway so so I'm, I'm excited let's get into the uh i, I yeah, asked you how you were you were deep diving I'm, i've been pretty you, busy mate? today yeah I'm, I'm i've been pretty i had an extra long weekend five day weekend t- took an extra day off so oh did um, you I, I, yeah, when you come back and it's a three day week this week, four day week next week. So I just, I would have loved, I love doing this stuff day in, day out, as in looking at property data. So I'd love to do this yeah. more. So more, more to come on that, I'm sure, but, but very well and uh, excited for this session. Well, one of the things we don't have today um, is a guest. We don't have a guest today. So we want to make sure that this is super inclusive and we need everyone that's in the audience to be our guest. So throwing comments, throwing questions. Um, Also, one of the things I realized is um, we don't actually ever introduce ourselves. We should probably do like a who is Jeff and who is Joe. And these get put up on YouTube. So if you guys, everyone in this room is not on our YouTube, jump on board. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, like, subscribe. I think you even have to hit the little bell icon. God. Smash um, it. Smash the like button. Smash, smash that smash, bell icon. Smash, 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 smash that, that bell icon. icon. You, you need to be here. So, so who are uh, you, Joe? But- Let's... Oh, Who am I? My name is Joe Tucker, and this is Jeff Miles. We created Oz Property Investors about two years ago, maybe just a little bit under two years ago. We are your smart, no BS friends that talk through all things property for you. Um, I have uh, I have since transitioned into becoming a uh, buyer's agent at Property Principles, and that is what I do full time. So this data research and analytics is what I do day in and day out. Um, but why did we create the, the group, Jeff? What was the what was the kind of point of all of that? Well, I suppose to me, I, when growing up, um, and, and just to give a spiel as to who I am, I'm, I'm I suppose a former mortgage broker, worked in sort of in and around financial services for, for longer than I care to share, actually. But I've um, been, been doing that sort of stuff and just bought um, bought bought a bought sort of multiple properties, continually sort of kept buying lots of stuff, done a couple of developments here and there. Um, but why do we create OzProp? This is not about me. It's about the, the group and the audience. And we are going to share location. Yeah, we exactly. created this because I we didn't have a we didn't have a, a net, our own network. We had sort of small networks here and there who who talked about property, but they, we didn't have 16,000 plus raving kind of property lunatics um, talking about it day in day out, so that's sort of what we. Um, yeah, is that sort of we met and we we didn't see this. We we're scratching our own itch, so to speak. Joe, is that kind of something? Well, that's it. I mean, you and I used to love to talk about how we would build our wealth through property. Now we are in the middle of that. Now we're in the process of doing that, and it's working very well. And um, we're loving it. So that's why we created this group because we wanted to speak to smart property investors and see how they do it. Um, so, guys, everyone that's a part of this community, thank you very much because. We got to do what we love every day. Just talk to people, learn about um, their experience and watch them grow. But today is about finding property deals. And that's what we all, all like to do. And the numbers are climbing of how many people are in the room. So I don't want to waste cool. anyone's time. So let's, um, what's the quote of the week, Jeff? What's your quote, mate? So my, my quote, uh, and I'll explain why this, this is actually from when, when I was in, uh, there was a hospital situation a couple of years ago. And uh, don't worry, every, every, everything's, every, everybody's good. Um, but, but a nurse said to me, the, uh, the, the days are long, but the years are short. Um, and, and that kind of stuck with me because it was, it was a challenging sort of time. And, and the reason that quote was, was quite meaningful for me is because um, it, it was, the day was, the days were, were sort of going on for quite long, but obviously time passes quite quickly. 
And I see people at the moment, they're getting FOMO and they're sort of saying, oh, look, you know, I have to buy today. I have to buy today. Um, what, what, I, what I took from that and how I'm applying from this is I, I think we need to realize that we actually have more time than what we think. Um, so our days, we do have, we, but we, it's, it's how we choose to spend that time. Um, the people are like, oh, I've got to buy yesterday, i got to buy yesterday, and that's great. But I think it's important to sometimes take a step back and, um, and, and then sort of say you, you can because we are making sort of hundreds of thousands, multi-million dollar um, property decisions sometimes here. So I think that's, that's my kind of quote. What, what's, what's your quote, Joe? Mate, that's a sensational uh, little quote. Um, mine's actually similar similar to that. Um, my quote of the week is um, it, you can you underestimate what you can do. You overestimate what you can do in a year and underestimate what you can do in five years. And I think this is the biggest thing about property and I hear this all the time. Oh, look, I'm just going to sit this out for like three to six months to see what happens to the property market. But you're not investing for three to six months. You're investing for 10, 15 years. And that's kind of what we advocate in this group is like, don't just buy to flip. Like what happens within the next year doesn't really matter. Do you think your property is going to be worth more in 10 years, 20 years? Yeah. Then go ahead. Can you hold it? Yeah, absolutely. Then just jump on in and don't be afraid because um, you'll, you'll regret it. Um, um, unless I suppose the only thing is unless that's part of your strategy, I think it's 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 important to be yep. clear on, on what you what you want to achieve, um, and then kind of uh, yeah. So I, I love that you yeah. uh, mentioned that, Joe. Well, well actually, yeah, and uh, the quote years. actually got one of our one of our guests, uh, one of our um, members, guys. What do you got? What what is everyone in this group? One of our group people, people Adrian uh, Adrian Player, who's a mortgage broker. Um, I posted about like you know buying a lot of properties in a short amount of time. He said, I'm at seven properties in two and a half years and will be 10 to, 30, uh, 10 to 13 within three. Like that is totally underestimating what you can do in 10 years. Um, and he did it. He's done it really well. So well done to Adrian. Um, now we're going to jump into our ad and then we'll jump straight into the data deep dive. Let's do You'll it. See the location for those who have been, those been waiting. No, no, I blocked that out. <laughs> I blocked it out. <laughs> This live session is sponsored by Scott Agat from Hello House. Scott has created the world's first property negotiation as a service business. So what does that mean? Well, let's think about it. When was the last time you negotiated on anything over $100, let alone a property that is going to be one of the biggest investments of your life? The vendor, they have a trained negotiator on their side in the form of a real estate agent. That's kind of like you stepping into the ring with Mike Tyson after never training a day of boxing in your life. These guys are trained professionals and that's what they do day in and day out. And this is what Hella House does every single day as well. They negotiate on property to get the best buy price from the real estate agents. Scott Agate, he's the expert negotiator. He has been in this industry since 1995. He owned and operated three Bell franchises. Scott was the guy that was teaching these real estate agents all these agent games. He knows all of their tricks. Having him on your side is going to give you a massive unfair advantage and literally save you tens of thousands of dollars. Unlike other ways of purchasing property, Scott's incentives are aligned with you, the buyer, meaning the more money he saves you, the more money he makes, which is what you want. You need to have those incentives aligned. Scott has kindly offered our group a massive discount on the retainer fee for his service. So if you're looking to buy your next home or investment property, click the link below to get in touch. Yeah, I had the, had the wrong thing copied there, Joe. But uh, I was just I was just looking at looking at the comments and uh, and somebody's face up. You've are. given um you've given Adrian a massive massive plug, and he's um and he's now getting people saying I want to DM so of DM him so. I don't know. Good, 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 good luck, sir. Good we, luck for we get we get no commissions or kickbacks from Adrian, but we will accept them if they are handed to us. So uh, oh. if you do sign up, give no, we're kidding, we're kidding, kidding, making a joke. Let's jump in. Okay, so one of the first things that I wanted to uh, cover off on this little data deep dive is this was the audience request, wasn't it, Jeff? Yeah, are you getting up the post? Are you? I'm trying to find the post as I uh, as we speak. Should be. Um, yeah, the, the search function on Facebook. Oh, you found it, did you? Nope. No. Nope. Jeez, yeah. live TV. If you, I, I... you can talk. Hey, I think you found it. Didn't you? Yeah. Here, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. it doesn't you, matter. Uh... It doesn't. It doesn't. No, no, no. Go, go, go and find it. it. Go and find it's it. It's not there, mate. 
isn't it? I'll, I'll, find, I'll find it out. You, you, you talk to the um, you talk okay. to the thing. Here we go. Data deep dive. So we occasionally do these little data deep dives because um, we thoroughly enjoy them. We love talking about and researching properties. And what we get a lot is people saying, where should I buy? And uh, that's a fair enough question. Where do you actually buy? There are over 15,000 suburbs within Australia. And um, it's very daunting. If you don't know very much about property or property investing, that's a lot of suburbs to go through. So what we did is we put through a poll and said, who wants to learn how to get, you know, buy a property at 300 or 200 to 300, 300 to 400, 400 to 500, 600 to 600, uh, yeah, et cetera. And you guys overwhelmingly voted for the 300 to $400,000 category. And uh, that's what we're going to be covering off tonight. So the first thing I wanted to hit up on was this is not financial advice. The information on this presentation and that's going to be on our YouTube channel and anything that is around is not hey, financial you, advice you have, at all i was gonna say you right. have to get you have to get better at i found the post very quickly but anyway besides i think it was okay. like 200 to 300 people vote for it so um okay okay great well nothing that we say here is financial advice you cannot can yeah seek financial advice from your professionals so essentially read this and go ahead with that um so the way property investing works is it's Art and science, right? It's art and science. Um, I like to think about it as an equation. Um, there is a population. Um, so who the people are living, uh, who are the people that are actually living there and are they going to drive capital growth? What's the population? Are there more people moving there? Um, employment. How are these people getting paid? How much are they getting paid? What are they getting paid? Why are they getting paid? What jobs are there for them to do? What projects and things are coming to them in that point of time? And is it actually a nice place to live? Like we see a lot of mining towns where it's a bit of a dump, but they're getting paid a lot of money. So prices go up. But if there's no projects, infrastructure and des desirability there, then it's a bit of a difficult one and you lose points on that. But essentially, these are our drivers of demand, projects, desirability, employment, population, minus the supply of stock that's coming on the market because property investing is just that. It's supply and demand. How many more people are there in an area and uh, how many houses are getting built to soak up that demand? So have we, have we actually add? given away the, have you already mentioned the location or did you skip us the first page? We haven't even, no, oh, we haven't revealed it. No, no, I, no, Gee. well, it's not on there. Anyway, any to <laughs> chat to on this? Keeping people on the edge. Um, I, I don't, I'd like to say on, on the location, I think what we want to bring to the audience here is we want to bring in uh, some fundamental kind of analysis rather than saying, okay, so we've we've picked this based on three to four hundred k. If personally, I, I would I would like, to, and I'm not saying everybody should do this, but I like the four to six hundred k mark because it gives me a little more a little more sort of scope mm. to, to go and buy property. But but three to four hundred k is what the audience wanted, so that's what that's what we're going to give them. Um, and I, I love these drivers of demand. I think it's. Oh, I know it does say that. It does say Townsville. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, the cat is out of the bag. We're talking about Townsville, but the suburb within Townsville that we've, we've selected. Yes. And this You're not going to know the suburb. suburb. You're not going to know the name of the suburb just yet. But yes, Townsville has been the one on the radar um, that we hit up on. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention on this uh, whole thing is. Um, there are generally four ways to make money in property. So for those people that don't really know too much about property, this is the way it works. You have growth, which is one of the most important functions of this. I know people, there's income investors that use, um, you know, use property investing to get, you know, an extra $50 a week. That doesn't really drive me at all. I don't want an extra $50 a week. I want to make an extra hundred grand in a, in a year. So that's why I choose high growth areas. You then have your income, which is your yield. So how much cash you're actually getting, is that going to put some money back in your pocket, purchasing the property under market value or on sale. So being able to drive discounts. Now, what are your thoughts on under market value, Jeff? Well, so I mean, to me, the, the value is what you pay on a, on a particular day. What, what, what I would say is, is a discount to what, what, the, what the sort of listed price is, is probably um, something that's more, um, more apt. Um, some people say, yes, you can buy under market value. Um, it's hard to be, hard to determine that, but but yeah, I, I think it's it can be challenging to to consider an under market value, but um, <laughs> but you can buy you can buy at a discount. I like the term discount. I like I like it. You like under discount. Value you like it's on sale. sale. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Also, yeah. Hey, what are your thoughts, Joe? He, he seems oh, like on, 
on our, on under market value um people are like it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a weird n- word but it's very important like it is real so the way i like to look at it is there's different markets you can buy properties on market off market pre market post market price reduced stock these are all the markets that i'm looking at when i'm buying an investment what's a property post market property how do you buy a mar- buy it after it's um after it's already been sold Joe? so okay not after it's been sold but if it's been on there for like a long long period of time right um, yep, yep. But if you're buying it pre-market, you're only buying it within a short, like only a few people. Like there's a property that I'm buying hopefully tomorrow um, that's got three properties on it that's going to get um, triple income and nobody else has seen this except for me. So that's the market I'm dealing. I'm only dealing in this market. When it, If it ever, if it gets to listing, then that's on market and there's heaps of other people and it's a different market. So that's how you get under market value. Anyway, sorry for the digression here. We then have value added, value added potential. So how can you renovate it? How can you subdivide it? Can you develop it? What can you do to add value in the long run? Then these, these growth just keep going like these just go in circles and speed up and they spin and the faster they go with the bigger the growth, the more the income, the more under market value and the more value you can add, the more your portfolio will well, continue hope, to grow. Hopefully not more under market value because if the existing portfolio, is <laughs> yeah. up, yeah. hopefully, hopefully <laughs> okay. it continues to go over market, but you continue to buy okay. what you're saying. Okay, yeah. exactly. Uh, cool. So what are we doing here, Jeff? Maybe you can talk to this one. Yeah, so yeah. it's so about... Maybe, maybe- yeah, it's about uh, kind of we, we've and, and we are, I believe, getting hopefully to the end of where, where um, COVID becomes an endemic rather than a pandemic. I'm not a health expert. I don't I don't play on the Internet, so I won't pretend to talk too much on that. Um, but we're sort of seeing the, these these things that have, that have played out. But the th- but I think that I find is interesting is the work from home narrative, which everybody says, oh, you know, it's going to end and it's it's going to finish, which I'm not necessarily where we're at least two years into this pandemic now. And, and I, I sort of think that maybe that, I mean, I, I'm not seeing much of a push back into the office. Um, so sort of there's there's that opportunity, the flexibility and, 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 and people to, rather than paying whatever it is, eight, eight, 700,000 in Brisbane or a million dollars in Brisbane or 1.5 in, in, in Sydney, 1.5 in Melbourne, wherever it is, um, you're, there's actually a capacity to, to live within two hours or... Or, or a travel commuting distance, even there, even Townsville is an hour and a half from from Brisbane by flight. So you can do, you can get, if you need to go to the office, you go to the office once or twice a week. So that's mm. what sort of I feel is driven. I'd be interested to see the twenty twenty two. Once we get these, we have to post it up and do it. But as you can see, yeah, lots we, of people are moving away of, of some people. I wouldn't say lots because thirty two thousand. Well, thirty two thirty two thousand and sixty sixty three thousand is a lot. That's, that's a lot point, of people point living. One percent of Australia's population, though, Joe. We're I mean, well, point one five percent. So it's it, we're not talking. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so, uh, some people are moving. So there is a narrative to push towards, yeah. and the recipient of that is regional Queensland in, in March twenty twenty one. So interestingly, yeah. a lot of the regions. Um, we're, we're receiving mm-hmm. Brisbane's a, a, a small region of uh, a small region of, of New South Wales, of Sydney, right? Isn't it? That's not really. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, people are just leaving. They're young professionals, and they want to get that lifestyle that they used to think was only available in retire at retire age. You know, I've got friends that make you know 150, 200 grand, and they work from home, and they now live in tropical Queensland because they can. Um, so it's hap- it's definitely happening a lot. But anyway, we'll get into the uh, the meat and potatoes of this sucker here. Um, so a little bit about Townsville and why we chose Townsville. Now, one of the things I guess to be aware of with Townsville is that it has, like, we are buying within three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. So it does make it a little bit challenging to have, like, it's just it's a bit of a it hasn't grown exponentially over the past. Uh, since the boom that they had uh, their last economic, their, their last growth cycle in 2007. Um, but here's a little bit more information about why we see opportunity here in Townsville. So the whole point of Townsville is um, it's expected to grow quite a lot. Um, so we've got a 2.1% per annum growth rate instead of the 1.9% growth rate for Queensland as a whole. Uh, so by 2041, they're going to have 282,000 people additionally which is i believe if i look at if i do a little quick i wouldn't say additionally it's going to have a total of 200 so i think it's an, an additional 100, yeah, yeah sorry yeah total which is a 42 percent increase on population as it currently stands which is absolutely significant can you make the slides big, bigger or is that stuff up the you can't do the 
no, no, you are. Right. There you go. Is that too big though? No, that, <laughs> that's fine, isn't it? I like it. Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. So, so we're talking Townsville location. So, if those of you, I've uh, I've been up to the lovely kind of part of the world. Interesting, you got Murrumbah there as well. That's a a town that we we won't speak too much about. Um, but North Queensland is un- undergoing, as it says there, massive waves of in- infrastructure renewal. So, actually, when I was doing the research on this. There's just too many. I could I could literally have filled this whole presentation with with information about the infrastructure, but I sort of picked some diverse projects here and there. Um, so as you can see, the numbers 1.5 billion on local road community infrastructure, but also just gentrification of of the the CBD of Townsville as well. Like you see the marina, or the, there's that sort of uh, the foreshore sort of area, which is getting some investment as well, which which makes that particular location a bit more desirable. So um, in terms of uh, some numbers. <clears throat> You've, and I'll let Joe talk to the household income and all that, but it is Australia's 14th largest city. So it's it's um, it's not it's not a small town. And yes, it is spread out, which is potentially one of the downsides I'll, we'll, we'll mention um, coming up. Um, but as you can also see, they saw a growth cycle way back in 2007. So I'm going to handball it over to Joe to again and talk about the uh, the prices there and also the in- household income. Well, that, that's kind of the, the big thing about this um, this area, right, for Townsville. So in, during the mining boom, it had a massive uh, uptick. Um, we had international commodity prices surging, and that peaked around that 2011, 2012, and then started to wind down. Um, so that when when that kind of when the end of the mining boom hit, um, Townsville was hit one of the hardest amongst. Every, I think it was pretty much everywhere. So I was reading through the, there was an AFR article saying that Queensland lost 22,000 jobs during the last few years for the mining boom. Boom. While Townsville, just in 12 months to April 2016, lost 9,500 jobs. So that's pretty substantial. Um, also, there was a massive oversupply of property in the area what was happening is all these mining boom like everyone was starting to invest in the area everyone was doing fly in fly out work and people were thinking oh you you know what i'm actually going to go here um i'm going to live here and they created with the help of a lot of government incentives a lot of property and then the boom went bust and it unfortunately affected the area massively so it hasn't seen a massive growth cycle in a very long time. Since, oh, there it is there since 2007. So it is Australia's 14th largest city. It is the, uh, 13, 1,300 kilometres, but um, it is one of uh, 82. It is 80 seconds most expensive. So the 14th largest city in Australia is 82nd in affordability. So what we kind of, what I'm kind of believe is that we are getting a large, substantial amount of infrastructure, right? The the government is cleaning up the local road and community infrastructure programs. And we're going to talk to this. But uh, what the hell is this slide? This is, this is a slide about a comparison of, of the towns in Queensland, Joe. So you sort of... Oh, it, yeah. It's, yeah. So so basically, if you look at those, if you go back to the big numbers, because I, I can't see. So, so you talk there, all those other cities are in the... Essentially, within sort of... a, a 30, 30 minutes to an hour of, of, uh, of Brisbane. So you got, you've got, of course, Brisbane, you've got Gold Coast, you've got Morton, I mean, Gold Coast, maybe an hour and a half, and you've got Logan, you've got Sunshine Coast region, you've got Ipswich. And then and then coming, so you've got population numbers. This, this is what it, what it's measured by. So you're looking at the, the uh, what's that, the, the seventh largest kind of city within within Queensland. So, I mean, we're not talking about a smaller and of, and of course, there is, um, there is, I suppose, it is a spread out area is what I would say about that. Um, but you, you can see that, that it hasn't actually grown that much from 2013 to 2018. You've, you've seen a growth of, of what, how is that? That's, that's about sort of six, it's about 8,000 numbers. But they're projecting. So they're saying, though, that over the next sort of 20 years, you've got a, a 100,000 people in, in Korea. I'd be interested to see whether, whether those projected numbers, but there's a lot of influx of people moving to this area and, and hence a lot of spending going on. Mm-hmm. 100%. Let's get into it. So what are we? what's going on? So the what we believe to be some of the economic recovery in the North Queensland region is the billions and billions and do- dollars of infrastructure and spending. Um Give us a bit of a run through on these ones, 
Yeah, so I, I sort of there's if you want to check out these projects, uh, there is the T Townsville uh, Council Townsville Council website is actually fantastic. I had a look at it. I don't I don't didn't necessarily look at the flood plans, but they have so like literally there's there was fifty projects that were mentioned. So I wanted to take not just because they're, they're building a lot of roads. There's a kind of a lot of sustainability as well is is a focus. So they're spending. And there's 276 million dollars alone on the on the Horton pipeline project, which that's only stage two. I think there's stage one was about 218 million from from memory. So there's well in excess of 500 million dollars that's been spent on on that particular project. The East End uh, Boardwalk, which is what I was sort of talking about there, they're looking to revitalise the CBD because if there's all these, if, if, sure, if you've got a, a whole bunch of infrastructure, but why do people actually want to live there? I think that's I wanted to pick that out, and there's, there's, uh, they're investing a lot in water sustainability because, as we know, water um, climate uh, climates may change and, and all that. So, so they're sort of saying we need to um, invest in su su sustainable water sources. The other thing I found really, really uh, fascinating was the Lansdowne Eco Industrial Project. So they're sort of they're getting ahead of the curve in terms of the industry, and they're spending. Uh, hundreds of not hundreds well, i'd say yeah, many millions of dollars on this project looking to create at, at least five thousand plus construction jobs um, but also nine thousand indirect jobs so uh, I, mm. I think it's it's sort of there's not only people moving there because obviously people moving they're going to have to have jobs right and construction jobs typically are, are, are generally higher paying so I, I mean to me that's kind of a a bit of a thesis around if you go to the next slide joe there's um yeah yeah, yeah. And one thing on this, Jeff, like what is the value of like why who cares? They've got they're spending millions and millions of dollars. Like what does that actually mean for property? Like I don't care. What does it mean? Well, I mean, for me, if if I'm if I'm gonna buy if I'm gonna move to an area, because obviously as an investor, we think we think most of our heads, we think about numbers and get the calculator out. But if I'm somebody who's typically you, you want kind of an owner occupier appeal. So if if there's not if there isn't the ability to have clean sort of um, and and reliable drinking water, which I mean I suppose is a given we take it, but if, if it's not an area that, that um and if there isn't jobs in an area and higher paying jobs because we don't necessarily if, if there's retail and I love people who work in retail but we want jobs that are that are um sort of going to pay and sort of enable people to pay more for property so um that's that's kind of why it, it's it's a okay. it's a bit of a I'd say it's a, a lead indicator rather than a lag indicator. So there's the spending going into an area and then people are saying, okay, well, there's investment there. Um, there's an anticipation of 100,000 people are going to move there. Um, and, yeah. and even things like this, you, want, you might talk to this. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to this one. This one here is a massive, massive win for Townsville. Um, the Singapore government has invested and given us $2.25 billion dollars for the military um, training incentive, which is going to get 14,000 Singaporean armed forces to um, train here, right? And um, that is going to bring a lot of people in. That's a lot of money to go to the area. And every time these people come, I think, what was it to say? 18 weeks, they're going to be spent. Yeah, it says it here. <laughs> I've already written it all down. Um, also, Hell's Gate Dam. Um, this is a massive dam project that is looking to be uh, 5.3 five billion it is going to be one of the largest dams in the southern hemisphere it is going to bring in an extra 800 million in um gross regional product and twelve thousand construction jobs during the construction phase and then obviously the ongoing and maintenance side of things so there is a lot of stuff going on here and oh look at this now we're talking about uh now we're talking about why would we want to live here what's what's all this about jeff Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it, it, I found it funny that Joe actually put this one in because I'm, I'm probably the, the big, the massive sporting fan. So the, the North Queensland Cowboys. So if, if you know, if you follow footy in 2005, there's a quote there from their only premiership winning captain when they <laughs> uh, actually know that they, 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 I'm trying to think, no, they, they won the premiership. They didn't win it in 2005. Sorry. And um, forgive, forgive me there. They, uh, this, they isn't a, this isn't a football. And no, I, no, but uh, I, I love my okay. footy, so, um, so every, every time, so the thing that's um, they built, they built this this brand new stadium, and their team is actually performing f fantastically as well. I'd say this year, so maybe they're motivated by the by this new stadium. So it's it's a two hundred ninety three million dollar investment. So I would say that there's a, a significant amount of research and planning that's gone into this. They they wouldn't build a stadium such as this. I'd say it's state of the art. Um, 
if, if they didn't expect that there was um, significant kind of growth um, of, of po people moving to an area. And I'd like to say that we've spoken a lot about population growth. Population growth doesn't always equal capital growth. Um, so we'll, we'll talk to that. But um, but yeah, th there, there is a lot of investment in infrastructure and desirable type, type of um, things in this area. Yeah, so that's that's one of the big points, right? Like it, it's becoming far more desirable. It's becoming a place people actually want to live in. Um, population is starting to drive, get is, is planning to be driven up. And that's why they're spending so much money because they're like, gosh, we're going to have 42% increase in population. So we're going to have a 2.1% growth rate. We need to give these people roads to drive on and um, things to enjoy. And uh yeah, it's coming along nicely. So again, this is just another chart about population growth. Um, so you'll see that compared to Townsville growth rate and Queensland growth rate, you'll be able to see that there. So it's it's growing more than Queensland overall. Uh, yeah. And then this one here, yeah, what's this one, Jeff? This is um, this is give, gives a bit of a hint as the area or the suburb within town within the oh, town. Oh, it does too. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so if you if you if you've been waiting, um, and, and we've we've chosen this suburb for for a couple of reasons. It's not to say, look, we, we've done initial kind of research on on this area. I would I would want to necessarily jump up. I would want to actually go there on the ground. But this one talks to your um your income within the region. So we've highlighted there Annandale, which which if if is a hint, um, it's the highest mm -hmm. house has the highest household income in the area so um and, and and you've got you've got a a number of areas there you've got townsville city which i imagine would have um kind of some white collar sort of workers living uh, and and potentially even sort of mm. construction workers living in the desirable sort of parts of uh the bigger sort of places in townsville so i think that it shows that there is um what, what, what's the scale so more than two 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 and a half thousand but what what's the is each one five hundred dollars joe or how much is yeah oh, i don't be? know Anyway, okay. anyway, who cares? One of the big points that we want to be aware of when investing in an area is if they have a diverse economy and diverse employment, right? So what would happen here? Where's mining? Where's mining gone? Um, wherever it's gone. Um, you don't want just one big piece of, you know, thing for mining and nothing else. This economy is actually far more diverse than you initially think. So um, there is healthcare, there is public um, admin and safety, so like government jobs, education and training, government jobs, retail trade. Um, you, do, you, you don't want too much of um, you don't want too much of that, but construction as well. So it's a very diverse industry. It's not think, just a, a one. What surprised me about this show is um, is there's not as many tourism. Like where where where, where does tour? I mean, maybe tourism comes under um, retail trade potentially. Maybe it doesn't break it down okay. to. Yeah, yeah. I, I was I was surprised when I saw these numbers because maybe I shouldn't have been surprised. But healthcare, so there is a large mm. hospital, or there's a fairly sizable hospital in Townsville, um, and mm. and there'd be a. I mean, getting the 12th largest city in Australia, maybe it's the 14th, the 12th or 14th largest city in Australia. You've got a, a, you've got government sort of departments that would be in this region. So, and you've got, 100%. of course, the military. Um, one thing to be aware of here is um, I don't have a chart for the the uh, gross state product or the gross regional product for this pro uh, for this area. But um, one thing to be aware of is that back when the property prices tanked in in um, uh, previous to the their boom, um, this GDP dropped, the GRP dropped drastically, and it's now been climbing, climbing, climbing up. So rather than being reliant on one industry, similar to what's going on in WA, WA has realized that we can't just be reliant on one horse towns. We have to actually bring in more infrastructure, more jobs, and make make our town more enjoyable than just for fly-in, fly-out workers. Now... The biggest downsides, downsides rather, for the area um, are cyclones and floods. Um, any other downsides, actually? Can anyone else throw in the comments any other downsides for living? If, like we, we're if, get we, if we've got any, if we've got any towns or locals, because I, I, I love hearing a local perspective. What, 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 what are people's thoughts on on uh, on the downsides of... I, I would, um, yeah, go on, Joe, but yeah. Well, okay. So one thing to be aware of is we're going to show you through a, um, a flood map. Um, one thing we're going to show you a flood map and it's going to, it's not actually a hundred percent accurate. 
Um, so you need to really be on the ground and understand some of the areas. But there are four main suburbs to avoid here. Railway Estate, Hermit Park, Rosalia, Indalia, and um, they're the worst affected areas out of all. And um, that's really the key takeaway that I want people to be aware of is floods add a, a big point on your um, insurance bill, um, also on maintenance as well. So in the there was a big, yeah, there was a big cyclone in 2019, which created a flood. Sorry, there was a big flood in 2019, not a cyclone. Um, um, but the, the interesting thing was, and let me just get this other screen up, was can, that can, can in I January... Ask, so why, yeah. Can I ask why the flood maps aren't accurate? Like, what's, what's the reason why? I don't know. Okay. No, it, I don't know. I think they're just not like... Like in speaking to agents and things, um, yeah. in, in having a conversation with agents, they're like, Oh yeah, that property was underwater. And then you look on the flood map. Oh, it's not underwater. Um, okay. So you just need to be really careful about those areas. So for from an investment perspective, I kind of just, you know, there's better opportunities than these areas. Um, one thing that you do find quite interesting is the prices actually don't fluctuate too much from a rental perspective either. Uh, sorry, a rental, it doesn't rent doesn't really matter, but um, like growth wise, it doesn't change too much, but you do see a larger amount of days on market. Uh, oh, lost audio? No. Okay. No, no. Good. I can, I can hear. You said, you said you yeah, lost sweet. audio. Uh, no, no, it just says it in the comments there. Um, okay. So this, this flood happened in 2019 and look what happened to house prices, right? It bottomed out. Like the, you could obviously see the trend going, and now property prices have started to climb up again. How many? So, um, how many? How many sales are, are, are happening though? At this, um, is it? Are we talking sort of a hundred sales? Are we talking two hundred sales? What, what are the? Or you don't know the? Uh, I'm asking the tough questions here, mate. Yeah, I don't know how to get the chart up. Um, when we dive into the suburb, I'll bring that chart up, and you'll yeah, be able all to good, see all good. Sorry, yeah, all good. Sorry, yeah, just. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, no. We can go here. Sold records. Here we go. That might give a bit of an indication. I think it said it there, didn't it? Oh, jeez. That's. Oh. See, now we're going to go. We're going to go down. A, we're, we're I think it's jumping it's, out. It's, of... it's vacancy rates. No, this is vacancy rates. So, um, the area that we've chosen is four eight four eight one four, which is Annandale. So you can see that the the vacancy rates, which are people. Um, renting how many rentals are available how many vacant properties are there available in the market have drastically dropped now the good thing is now we've we've mentioned a couple of risks we've mentioned a couple of downsides to the area um but um the thing to be aware of is you're getting a positive cash flow out of this region so yes it is there isn't that um massive 30 percent growth 40 percent growth that we've seen over the past two three years but you're able to hold your property um, with a positive cash flow and there's billions and billions of dollars of infrastructure going in. And that's the main reason why we chose Townsville is because of how much infrastructure and spending is going on. This amount of infrastructure and spending was going on during the boom and that drove the prices ridiculously. Um, so, would, yeah, that's, um, that's kind of... One, of... one of the downsides, and you, you did sort of touch on it, but I, I'd like to hammer that point home, is that, is that insurance no. can, can insurance premiums can and, and possibly will yes. be higher in this region. So, and, 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 yes. if, some, and, and if, if you've got repairs, that can eat away at some of the cash flow. So I think, yes, whilst it's, an op, whilst it's, it's a potential advantage, I think it needs to be sort of to weigh, weigh, weigh the thing, weigh, weigh, the, um, weigh the scales. There yes. is that... Um, there's that consideration of, of costs and expenses. Yeah. And in these type of tropical climates, you do have to be very careful of purchasing properties that um, are like, like weatherboard and just be careful. Yeah. Just understand there's going to be more maintenance than your weatherboard that you have in Victoria. Um, there's going to be more stuff needing on there. There's going to be longer vacancy periods as well in these type of areas higher insurance premiums, um, and obviously avoid the flood zones. They're the, they're the main ones to factor in. Yeah. So I hope we've sort of presented, uh, I think we've, we've gone, we've presented the pros and cons there. We haven't just said, said that this is uh, absolutely the, the area to, to buy. I think, um, I think we, we were presented with a, with, a, with a request from the group. They wanted three to 400K. 
and and this this is one one such area where there's where there's potential to pick up and and um, but but going back to to start there, Joe, you've got the four kind of things that you look at. If you're purely only looking for capital growth, then then maybe this is an area that, that there may not you may not tick your tick your boxes. Um, you may need to consider some of those other factors as well. Um, which, well, I don't know. Which, well, I think if if a if an area has this much infrastructure going in, this much population, what is yep. and oh, one of the things is right. What's the supply? What yep. is the supply that's coming on the market? So let's start going to some of the tools, right? We were promising free tools. We were promising paid tools. So one of the free tools that I really love is Suburb Trends. This is created by one of um, one of the good friends of the group, um, Kent Lardner. And all you need to do, you need to create a free account, go to Suburb Trends, and this gives you a large amount of data. So you type in, um, now you, you can't really, you can't just type in Townsville, um, because uh, it will just bring up Townsville City. So you actually need to dive into the area. And um, we're going to jump you. into... Yeah, sorry. We're going to jump into Annandale. And it turns out there's three Annandales all throughout Australia. Yeah, um, the most, when, when you said we were doing Annandale, Joe, I was like, we're doing, we're doing Annandale in Sydney? I was like, mate, you're not finding anything... You're not finding a parking space for under half a million in Annandale in, in Sydney. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, a bit small. Could you could you make it? Can we make it bigger? That's what she said. There we go. Oh, it's oh, there we go. That's that's a bit better, but maybe it's too big yeah. now. You can't yeah. win. Can't win. Okay, so one thing to be aware of is when you are looking at property prices for places, don't just rule out. So if we got a calcul, if we got a um, spreadsheet here and said our property price is three hundred to four hundred, we would have ruled this area out. But just because it's the medium price um, doesn't mean that it is uh, a no-go because you can buy properties under the median. And I actually recommend that. I recommend buying properties 10 to 15% under the median value because then they've got a potential to grow. Uh, but oh. why do we like these areas? So what are some of the things, what are some of the data that we want to be looking at when we are assessing an area? So one of the things we want to look at is building approval pipeline. We want to see what is coming on the market because we've got all these demand drivers coming. We've got the high, uh, we've got all the, you know, the projects on the go. We've got a highly desirable area. It's, um, uh, it's got a good employment. It's starting to have those upticks. But what we want to see from a property market perspective is we want to see the days on market dropping. So we want to see them going lower. We want to see the listing price. Oh, I think I messed up this on the last one actually as well. It's not listing oh, price. Sure. Inventory levels dropping still haven't, and vacant. Still haven't fixed it, man. I still haven't fixed it. Vacancy rates. <laughs> so let's have a look at the vacancy rates. So a, a balanced market is at 3% vacancy rates. So if we have a look 12 months ago, if we zoom in, this, prop, this market was at 1.3% six months ago, um, and 0.2% and is at 1.1%. So that is a, that's emergency vacancy rates. Can, um, can, I, they can, do I ask, a, can I ask a question though, Joe, because uh, I just looked at, you, you skated over that there. It, it's trending up slightly. Uh, I mean, of, of course it was at under, it was like 0.2% 12 months ago. So yep. it's spiked so, a little bit. What, what are we sort of? What are we saying? What, so if you have now? a look, like here, like these are dangerously low. So if it, if this kept going up and up and up and up, yeah, you would definitely need to think about it. But you've got to also be aware that there's blips, right? Like um, what, why was there a longer period over December and January? Oh, maybe people were at Christmas and there was more available stock. I don't know. Um, but you just want to watch the trend. Trend is your friend. Um, so keep oh, yeah. your eye on the trend. Good, yeah. good question. Um, but they give a, this is a free tool. Everyone can use this. So you start researching your suburbs in here. Um, so the current days on market is 42. This is decreased from 62 from 12 months ago. The median house price is 450. Using the Townsville SA3 region, we estimate that the change in medium sales price is 12%. So it hasn't gone absolutely gangbusters and the medium house rental price is four hundred and fifty thousand. 
So if we can get a property, like the property- I think that, 11% sorry. in the last 12 months. I mean, that's almost a percent a month though. I mean, I, I know, I know yeah. that we have, we've, I know that we've seen 20 or 30%, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'd, I'd take 11%, but yeah, you, you are it, compared, comparatively so, right. The inventory, the stock on the market um, is, is a little bit on the higher side. We would like to see a little bit more pressure, a little bit more- um, like a this is kind of like the supply and demand ratio. Um, so we would want to see this at like in between three to six. So it's within that kind of, uh, sorry, less than like, we want to see it within three, like around that three area, but it's at four. So it is something to keep your eye on. Is there going to be more stuff coming on the market, which we're going to cover off soon? Um, house listings have remained pretty steady, um, but just yeah. starting to tick up. And what has that done for prices? Prices have remained fairly steady because there hasn't been, I think this it, it's deceptive though because if you look at the it's pretty uh, deceptive. Yeah, because if you look mm -hmm. at the start of it, I think it's like three three thirty seven compared to three seventy five. So that's that that's actually that, that's that's about a that's about a fifth that's about a thirteen percent increase. Um, mm. So that's what that, that's the only I think they need better. I mean, I think they I think it needs to be a better kind of scale with that particular thing. But yeah, anyway, it's just my so. Another way to look at things is looking at the market because we talk about the median house price and that median house price is made up of all of these properties divided by however many properties there are. Um, so right now, um, we want to buy within this segmentation here where everybody else is buying between the 400 to 600,000, um, but there is also zero to 200,000. So we're looking at a property here that's 300 to 400. So there's a lot of transactions within this kind of price range. What's this? I yeah, think the thing that concerns me a little bit is they have they have a graph that says six thousand percent, so it should be sixty percent. That that's um, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> the decimal point. Uh, a key thing to keep your eye on here is housing approvals as well. How many properties are coming on the market? So all this demand is going to get soaked up by the supply of houses. And one of that's actually one of the reasons why Annandale is on our list. So if we have a look here, this is um, Mount Stewart. You can't build out very much more available land because it's all hemmed in by these ranges. So there needs to be that supply and there needs to be um, an opportunity for that supply to be hampered. So you can't build any more properties around this area. Around here, are some of the uh, some of the areas that were drastically flooded in um, during the flood? So we're going to try and avoid some of these ones. Um, but Annandale was flooded a little bit, but it wasn't crazy flooded. So that's a big filter that you need to throw over the top of your research as well. Yeah. Any uh, anything else to cover off on that, Jeff? No, I think I think that uh, that that actually covers off. I think the 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 next uh, the next sort of I mean the next part we we could potentially look at it depending on what you where you wanted to go with this we we could look at uh, the the tool microverbs which I know microverbs um, we don't need to what, what what else did you I think yeah no yeah. no let's jump into microverbs I want to have a yeah. run through of that yeah so um, I, I was looking at this other day and and be mindful um, I, I I'm, I'd be pretty keen for the so this is from this is from 2016 data so full on. disclosure <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So you have to be. Oh, you're going. You're going to the Bay Run, mate. That's day two miles, something around here, and and in Dale, but um, yeah, up in Queensland. There you go. So the the thing that I was seeing here, and 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 of course, I, I would before outlaying sort of close to or somewhere between three hundred to, to half a million dollars, I would want to actually um, to get my. I'd like to get my boots on the ground and understand what's going on. But if you look at the numbers here, there's they look they look particularly kind of kind of promising just from a desirability perspective. So I've looked at a lot lot at the I looked at the infrastructure as well as the desirability as well as the employment. So they're the kind of three areas, and they. At a, at a surface level, they ticked my boxes. Um, that's a funny way of putting it. But if you if you scroll, if you jump into the um, the family score, Joe, that kind of that that's the thing. The thing that um, is is very you've you've got a lot of schools. You've got the the local kind of high school there. You've got the, the one the one thing that was that there's got you got a sporting complex. You've got plenty of schools within a, a, a an easily drivable even kind of walking distance or some of these schools. So and and I don't. 
but um, I don't necessarily. So there's plenty of options as preschools, as daycares, as as family daycare. There's plenty of options. The other thing that I quite like, if you go um, a bit further down, Joe, is um, just go to a different, go to the affluent score as well, which which I thought was, um, yep, affluent score. Well, nine this out one, of ten is spectacular. It is. Where's and all the, the public, public housing? Yeah, if, and if you look at so if you look at the scale, there's there's one that's you, you and you aren't the thing that also was was quite uh, quite somewhat reassuring. You, you do have some some higher um, higher um, social health or public housing just just a, a couple of that's probably what five ten kilometers maybe depending. I'm not sure of the scale, um, but but the thing I liked about this is there's not there's almost no public housing within this particular. Yeah. Some in Vincent, but um, so I mean that's that's obviously a pocket to. If that was right next door, it would be a, a bit of a red flag for me. Um, and and you've got the as as it says there the the average income of eleven eleven hundred and twenty seven a week, which I think has gone up quite a bit <clears throat> since then as well. It's gone up considerably. Yeah. And this actually, it was funny. We were talking to Chris Sizan, and he was saying like, uh, and I can confirm as well. This data is very accurate. Like when you go to an area and you see like the red and the orange um, for like public housing and and like what you what like click through all of them and see what kind of lights up. But Annandale is lighting up for all the good stuff. But um, it you can kind of notice it um, and it Even kind of rents, confirms the renters as yeah. well. You've got you've got under thirty percent, and I, I I do know that it's it, it's only an arbitrary necessarily, but usually I like to I like to look at. Um, Sort of seventy percent owner occupied to thirty percent renter. So it's not to say that a that a forty percent renter to sixty percent owner occupied is necessarily bad, but it's just something that is is something I'd want to look um, dig a bit deeper into. Because because ultimately, Joe, and interested in your thoughts on this, my 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 view is owner occupiers are the ones that the emotional buyers, the ones that will, will, will push up the prices in the area and, and pay more rather than the investors who want to get a rental yield. I suppose generally, yeah. Yeah, generally speaking, you want more owner occupiers in the area, but you also do want to have a proportion of renters as well, so you have someone to rent your property to. Um, but what I really like here is it's one of the key employers' um, healthcare center, and yep. also the the university as well. And then you've got more healthcare, you've got more health, you've got the hospital along here as well. So it's a key, yeah. easy to get into town. It's not very far away. And we're talking three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar properties that are giving about four hundred to four hundred and fifty percent for four hundred and fifty dollars, which is a yield of about four to five. Uh, sorry, five to six percent. The um, thing, uh, the question that I um, is is that um, that that river or that thing that sort of flows in there is that is that sort of is, are those the properties closer to the river? Is that what you're hearing that they were that those are the ones that flooded? I, I'd imagine. Okay. So this is an awesome portal, like you were talking about, Townsville. Let's have a look at the flood map because this is what you've really got to overlay a lot of what you do your research on because right now, this is pretty scary. <laughs> this is a scary looking thing. It's flooded everywhere. Um, so if we go to some of those areas that were on our uh, on our list here, um, where did it go? Cyclones. Railway We've estate. got Railway Estate, Hermit Park, Rosalia, and in Indalia. So we go there. Um, and this is this is where this is where I was talking about in Delhi. It doesn't look like it got flooded at all. Like you've got a little bit here, but there's no houses there. You got a little bit. Jesus, that's very deep there. That is three meters. So the map is saying that this is three meters worth of flooding, but these houses weren't affected. No, those houses wow. were affected. So you've got to be really, really careful here. Um, but this is the key thing to look out here. The key, it's called the depth gauge. So as you look at Annandale, you don't want to be buying along here, but have a look. What is along here? It's all um, vacant, vacant properties. So it's okay if the property has some water on it, like there. This property here has a square of water on it. That's okay. That's zero to uh, so that's thirty centimeters of of water. That's not, not a big concern. We're not meteorologists though here, so just um yeah take a meteor. Is that what this job is? I, I don't I don't um, I don't know whether the meteorologist does the does the flooding, but um yeah yeah yeah. That um, so that is this is a key thing to um be using as well. 
Um, what I wanted to also do now is jump to some of the paid data. Now, this platform is something that I reckon nobody else in this group has heard of um, very much. Um, I am very much a data guy, and uh, so is Jeff. But this platform is called Suburb Finders. Now, it is a paid resource. Um, uh, Suburb Finders, I think it's, it's like definitely no, no, cheaper than my... Suburb finders. Under you, forward slash pricing. But anyway, let's uh, pricing. Um, this resource is absolutely sensational. If you want to start doing data deep dives, so what it allows you to do <clears throat> is go found. through. Page not found. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'll, we'll find it at the end. Um, you get to choose what you want. So I'm going to save my dashboard here. Change to Joe Townsville. Okay, great. Now let's clear all of these and it allows you to filter out all the things that you want to be doing and filtering out. So where do you want to buy? So if you don't know where you want to buy, filter it out by price. So just type in price. Uh, no, it's not price. It's uh, sale, I think. Oh, God. This is why you don't do things live. Um, probably you, you probably have to dig, um, maybe you have to reset your filters, yeah. Yeah, here we go, medium price. And then you just filter it out. What is my purchase price? My purchase price is 400, you know, 350 to 400,000. Great. Okay. Well, what state do you see a lot of value? Well, New South Wales, um, you know, I don't don't really want to buy there. I want to be buying in Queensland. So you chip it, you choose Queensland, chooses the state, chooses the region. Now we go down to the region that we want. Now you can keep all of these open. You can compare um, Townsville, let's have a look. Let's compare North Toowoomba and Annandale, wherever Annandale is. And you can just pick those up. What I like to do is compare, you know, locations that are all together. But anyway, you work through these and you get more and more. So you start looking at supply, like what is the medium rooms advertised? What is the for sale listings? What is the demand of the area? So we're talking about demand drivers now. So what are the days on market? What's the online search interest? How many people are interested in purchasing this property? And then performance, which talks about the medium price, medium rent, 10-year growth rate. So if a place hasn't grown in 10 years, um, you, you, know, you want some growth, but there might be more potential for those type of areas. Um, and if the property looks after itself by paying the rent, it's pretty good. Um, anyway, filter it out however you feel. Um, I've got my saved dashboard, which is called oh god. What are, what are, what are people? Um, what are people? I haven't read, haven't looked at the comments. So what are, what are people's thoughts on? Are they, are, is everybody loving it? Uh, loving the session? Like what? It, what are you sort of? What would you like to see more of? Because we can potentially tweak it on the. We wanted it to be interactive. Cool. I might actually have to look at the comments to do that. Yeah, we do. Um, so this this site here, I filtered it by um, days on market. So I've got it from like 60 days on market. I'm taking on all of this as financial Not advice. Fun it, that's, that's probably uh, uh, that's probably Polizzi or something. It's somebody cheeky. <laughs> not, not financial Days on market. Advice. Online, because we want the online search interest to be high. We want the median price to be within our band. We want the median rent to be quite high and our vacancy rates to be quite low. Um, so all you do is we now have all of these suburbs within this area. So let's choose some of these suburbs, um, Bushland Beach, Vincent, Cranbourne, Henley, and this one. We can compare up to five suburbs at a time. You just hit compare, and then it brings up all the comparison points for these areas. So all of a sudden, we can compare what is the median rent for these areas. What is, what's got the best yield? Vincent has the best yield. So that's interesting. But that's, what's that, the that's meaning? also the one that was in the, the, the that had 59% public out uh, or a lot of public. Oh, oh, yeah, it was too. Yeah, it was too. So that's right at the bottom here. Look at this 200,000. 200, God. Uh, what's the median rent? Okay. What's the median yield? You can see that the yield is quite low on Annandale because it's more expensive. Um, what is the vacancy rates? They're all following a similar trend, but they're all quite low. Days on market. What are the days on market? Are they driving down? Looks like they've been driving down for the last couple of, um, for a little while now. So that's good. We're not seeing a massive spike. We're seeing the days on market like we saw in the suburb trends data going up. What's going on with Bushland list? Beach though? What is going on with Bushland Beach? 
Yeah, what's going on there? That's is that a bit of an, an, an anomaly? Perhaps? Well, I have a feeling that the total listings for Bushland Beast, Bushland Beach, would be quite low as well. So yeah. you know, it, it, like three properties go over an extra little bit more, and it jumps it up crazily. Um, mm. So you've got to look at the the value. So total listing volumes for these areas, they're all very similar in. On this um, um, on this platform, Joe, can you look at it over a longer? Because this is looking at monthly data. Can you can you do a trend over over a year or six months? Because I, I don't know, monthly can fluctuate a, a little bit. Well, yeah, that's why you're looking at it since 2019. But yeah, it would be nice to go further back. Um, yeah. Would be nice. We'll to just go look at back, it like a, longer, five, a longer a longer time scale because yeah yeah. And, um, this is one of the interesting ones that I like. Median number of people looking for a room. So this is how many people are looking for a room. Um, and you can see in Vincent, nobody is looking for rooms in Vincent. But in Annandale, we had 29, 33, 37, 41, 44. It went up. And then you saw the vacancy rates drop. Um, and that's what's coming on here. Um, but how many rooms are advertised online? So we've got 47 people looking for a room. And we've got five properties listed. It so I'm going gimmicky, to have... though, looking for a room. Jeez, what, what do you, what, you? I mean, do, do I go around it's... to a? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want one. No, bedroom. Like, oh, <laughs> do you want? Do you want my room? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is super cool. And then once you've identified your area even more, go into the region, and it will give you more information. The population, high interest, seventy-three percent owner occupier, very good. 27% renters, what their monthly mortgage repayments are, household e weekly income. Now, what we were talking about here when we're talking about some of our data points is online uh, days on market. We want to see that trending down, and it has been. Um, but you can see here the online search demand, so people actually interested in looking at the property, drove up quite a bit. And now we're starting to get a little bit of pressure on the days on market over the last six months, but also the online search interest has slowed down as well. Um, get rid of the median price for units, just keep it for median price houses. We can see that the sales listings have been pretty steady eddy and that's why the prices have been pretty steady eddy as well because there's not that much, there hasn't been a, a wild crazy pressure on it at the moment. Um, but then the vacancy rates are super low as we saw before. Um, and then here's the comparison between rents available, rooms available and how many people are looking for rooms. Yeah, the, the only so, the only thing I would say about this for the for the person watching at home who, who's not uh, who's, who's only bought or hasn't bought their first property or, or or has only bought one or two, I would I would be a little cautious looking at looking at all this because you are just going to suffer. You are very likely going to suffer from analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I know Hay Hayden's watching, so you'll love this. But the data is great, but the that you can you can just eat the more the, how much data do you want to con consume before you just end up saying oh, it's all too much i can't make a decision so you need to actually yeah. say well pick a couple of metrics actually speak to the people on the ground and then and then sort of say okay look here's here's, here's what i i'm going to make a decision to proceed or not proceed mm. yep That's yeah no you 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 spot on and this is what happens. Like I've I've spoken to people that are like, yeah, Joe, this is really good. You know, I don't, I don't. Um, I'm going to do this all my. Looking for rent for a room. Yeah. In anyway, the there's a lot of tools in here. Um, how much does it cost? It's like it's a couple of hundred bucks. Um, I would definitely be like, if you're a data, if you want to dig deep into the data, you get a free trial. Um, there you go, 99 bucks a month or three, 250 bucks a quarter. We do not get paid by any of this. We're we're not promoting um, these guys. Um, I'm just saying that they've got some interesting data and they're doing some interesting things. So it's one to watch and you can get a whole heap of information. And you can whittle it down very quickly into a selection of suburbs that you actually want to be doing. Um, so that is that platform. Um, now, what we've got is another couple of platforms to cover off. So on the house, that was su that is super useful for getting a little bit more information um, about demographics and areas, uh, suburb, uh, sorry, on the house here, it gives you that kind of that growth chart as well, it tells you what people are made up, what's their household. So if you go deep into that, what the median growth has been as well. So you can see after the bottom, at, bottom out in 2019 it has been climbing, but not exceptionally like you would see, like, uh, you know, what's a, what's another area that's absolutely crushed it, um, 
around Australia. Maybe <clears throat> probably put. So I say you could or Hull at Cove. Is it a prop is it a location in hey, where's the South chart? Australia? Yeah. Yeah. Hallett Cove has absolutely been crushing it. Um and you can see that. And what's the median growth? Exponential. Like it's grown crazy. Thirty percent from one year. Right. Um awesome. Cool. Okay. So that's, that's that platform. Um, SQM research. This is absolutely awesome for understanding um, the whole heap of stuff, right? This is all free as well. Total property listings. What is the listing and the supply on the market? What is the wait, one four? was it? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. We can see what's been, how many listings there are over 180 days. So there isn't a massive, like there are areas, like if we start looking at Moreton Bay, there is a large amount of upward pressure on prices. I feel like we should have a little faces on here so people can actually see. Well, should, can, 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 I, can I get a bit, uh, can, I, can I get sidetracked a little bit for, for one second? Yeah, sure, mate. Can sure, I ask you, you, you mentioned Moreton Bay and I know you probably buy a few there, but what's your, um, what's your, I don't know, maybe feel free to push back on this question. You want. What's your favorite area in Moreton Bay at the moment? <laughs> there's a lot of good areas in Moreton Bay. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Like, there's no favorite. It depends what you want. It depends how much money you have. It depends what you're trying to achieve. Like, it needs to be based off your goals. Um, so if you have $400,000, I probably wouldn't be saying, you know, um, go to Moreton Bay because you can't afford it. Um, you can get a townhouse in Moreton Bay, but further up, further up, further. Um, but if you've got... You know, seven hundred and fifty thousand. I would be buying you a fantastic property in um, Adelaide, um, South Australia, and um, WA. Um, so you'd be getting cracking deals at that. Those those type of prices are awesome. Um, vacancy rates on here, so you can see all of those trends over a, a very long period of time. There's a whole yeah. heap of data in in this resource. Walk score as well. This is an area where Annandale suffers a little bit. Um, yeah, it's not very walkable. Yeah, it's not very walkable at all. Um, but I, so out of I, all, I think I think that's if you looked at. I mean, they, they don't do an average of of the region, do they? In walks, because I looked at this, and I think a lot of the. Oh, there we go. I think a lot of the area is a bit like this. I mean, if you go right in the center of Townsville, it's not. Um, yeah, super. Um, but this is really handy because this prop this does your whole property for you. So like it'll go like here's a property here. Uh, if we click on this, um, nearby apartments, they they generally thought you could click these. Usually you click them and it'll take you to that property, but it's not for whatever reason. But this is really good. So if you type in um, type in a, an address, you'll find that there. Super useful resource for understanding that. Um, Residex has a free report. Um, REM plan has a great bit of uh, yeah I, I thought the the economic data that, 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 that they had there was um, was fantastic it's this is um this is it's, it was pretty cool just looking at this could... yeah so here are some of the employment statistics. we pulled a lot of the the data for this report from this platform and it does it for everything so if you really want to dive deep and see what is the output of the region what are the wages what are the salaries do you want to have that in a pie chart or a bar chart um, how do you want it laid out? How much yeah. money is every like? How much money is everyone making? What are they exporting? How much is it? All of this. We've just uh, we just created some Saturday night viewing for some people. I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna save that one to the to the to the browser for Saturday night. That's what I did. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and uh, this this is what you were talking about, Jeff, wasn't it? What's this one? Yeah, this is the the council website, and, and just uh, I mean the amount of projects that they, that they have um, sort of coming up and in, in the works, the current projects as well, not just not just projected ones. Um, there's just there's a lot lot of activity going on, which I, I must admit it, it's not one I've I've looked too deeply at. And some of these are smart parking meters. I don't. I mean that's not a massive <laughs> kind of one, but there's just a lot of spending going on in the region, and it, it did surprise me um, to to look at what's what's happening, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, but yeah. So should, I think there's there's even a uh, last there was a, yeah that, that was that council website. 
there, there was even a, a a property Joe as well. We'll, we'll have to we'll have to look at and, and dive into that project. Uh, property rather than project and, just, and then we'll get some questions for the audience sure there's been heaps of questions but before, okay, we, cool. before we look Let, at that property joe before we look at that property okay so what we'll do is now how do we determine what type of property we're purchasing right so we know what our area is we know what our budget is how do we go about then finding an investment grade property right how do we go and get one of these properties because when our focus we were focused on growth we now want to focus on some income and we want, to buy a per, we want to buy a property under market value and then we want to have the potential to value add. So how are we going to combine all of these four resources into one? We will do that right after the advert You call break. it the property square, Joe. You call it the square. Oh, there you go. Be, do. Be, be there or be yeah. square. The amazing thing with commercial property investing is that in most cases it's cash flow positive from day one, which means that you can drive those profits towards paying down the debt. There are instances with commercial property investing where you can actually have the property pay itself off over 10 years, which is absolutely crazy. With commercial property, you get massive net yield, so you can expect anywhere between 6 to 10%. And as we've seen in the current boom, these properties not only provide large cash flow, they do certainly grow wildly in value too. Now, with big rewards comes some risk, and this is why you should de-risk your investment as much as possible. And the way you do that is with expert due diligence. And this is why we highly recommend people hire professionals to help you along in your investing journey. Steve Polisi of Polisi Property is one such expert. Being a chartered mechanical and structural engineer in a past life, Steve draws on his analytical and mathematical skills to do that expert due diligence for you. With six years experience in the space, Steve has over 1,200 property transactions under his belt. He's the guy you want in your corner, crunching the numbers and finding the best properties in the best locations, along with ensuring that you avoid the mistakes. Steve has actually even written the book on commercial property investing in Australia. And not only is it a bestseller, I believe it to be the most comprehensive in commercial property investing on the market today. He's been generous enough to give us a massive discount for our audience of 50%. So use the code OZPROP, click the link below, get a copy today and start learning and getting on your commercial property investing journey. There we go. So there's, there's been plenty of, uh, been some great questions pop in. So if you have any questions, comments or, or even, yeah, just just any, any, uh, any feedback, even Hayden's in there as well. Throwing throw his throw his thoughts in, love it. Um, here we go, Joe. Awesome. We got some properties. What are we looking at? So let's do it. So what are we going to do? First thing we want to do is work out our budget, right? We want to have an overlay because that's going to filter out the fifteen thousand suburbs into a lot of a narrower focus. Once we found um, that suburb and gone through it all, um, we then go to uh, Annandale. We found our suburb, like what we were talking about there with with the data. You need to dig into that deeper. Um, but this is a super cool, uh, super interesting tool to use to just identify like what is what what's kind of selling the most like what is actually this market filled with so if we have a look at Annandale in Queensland it's got 338,000 so our budget is 338 and we want to uh, for, uh, sorry 300 to 400 um four four bedroom properties are going to 467 so it sounds like we probably can't get a four bedroom property in this area, but let's try it, right? Yeah. Let's go to, um, you know, let's try and get- I find interesting about this is that they've sold nearly a hundred four bedders, but but only 40, uh, 40 odd free bedders. So is that- It's usually, it's usually not that. Like if we look at like Annandale- In New South Wales. New South Wales. You're probably talking units, I'd say. <laughs> Well, Jesus, two, two million. But like 63 days, we got 61 sales in the three better. Like there's, there's always three betters and two betters. But one thing I think it, it might actually be is people, exactly like we were talking pe before, people are moving from the cities and they want to get out. They want to have they need a zoom large room. They need a Zoom room. They need larger space for the kids. They, they are going to be working from home a lot more, so they need a lot more space. So I reckon if we have a look at the trend, I think you'd definitely see a trend. Um, oh, it doesn't say the – oh, look, there you go. I don't know. Uh, you need, need to zoom. There you go, 15% uh, yeah. growth. So 
dig into this. So look at that, 50, 50, 72, 57, and then it's just grown those past two years. So I guess that kind of goes along with that theory. Could also be what, thing what, is, they're, what they're building or what, what the, yeah. yeah, maybe I don't know how many, whether the, what types of properties that they've got. But then we can start looking, like just go super, dip, but just be super picky to start with and then start loosening up. Four bedroom between 250 and 400,000. Um, there you go. Let's see what we've got here. Actually, it's almost, almost nothing. Yeah, it's going to be um, like it's going to it's going to be unit. It's going to be unit wise. So this one here, a four bed, two bath for under four hundred thousand. What the hell is going on here? So, so oh, okay, sold off market. There you go. Okay, perfect. So if you want a real tip and trick, this lady sells stuff off market. Do you know who I'm calling tomorrow? I'm going to have a chat with Amy tomorrow. And I'm going to say, Amy, oh, I saw that you sold stuff off market. I'm Joe. You you and me are going to get along really, really well. So uh, can you sell me stuff off market? Because I know that uh, the average purchase price for a four-bedroom property in this area is 467000 and you've just sold one for four hundred. What are you doing? Let's. Well, actually, you don't say that. <laughs> you don't point out. Yeah, to, Rob, let's, let's, like. let's, yeah, that's. But there's not much listed, right? So we're not going to get a four bedroom property. We're going to have a three bedroom. Um, so I would always try and focus on things like little extra bits. So like if you can turn the property into a, if it's a, if you're going to add a value, sorry, add value to it with the floor plan. Can you add an extra bedroom? Can you add an extra bathroom? Is that actually possible? How big is how so, this land for this block? 600 and something. Okay. Yeah, it's probably it wouldn't be wouldn't be conducive to a development. Well, and also one of the things to be aware of is like houses are so affordable in this area that 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 subdividing a block and putting two small properties on it probably not going to sell as well because people are like no, I want I you know I want a large land size. So if you're thinking oh I'm going to chuck a granny flat on the back, probably reconsider it. Because it's not going to be, it's not the type of product that people want in the area. They want these massive houses. They've come all this way to the beautiful Townsville and um, they're not going to get all cut up into a little block. So I think, I think about you that. found, did, did, did you find one, Joe, though? Is that? Okay. So I found this one. Um, this is the one that I would have gone for. It's not off, mar it's not on the market, though. But um, yeah, I would have purchased, I would have done a bit more due diligence, right? Let's go to Lewis, that court area, and double check if it's not in a flood zone. So we go to our Townsville map. Uh, where is it based? Bruce Highway, and uh, there it is down there. So we then go to what? So hard to navigate this thing. Yeah, they they don't. Uh... Oh jeez. So you can't you can't punch in the address though. No. Surely, that's really weird. You should attend. There it is. You gotta, you gotta search. There you go. So ten, it's not in a flood zone. No, nope. it's got a little bit of water over the front front there, but it's not not in the flood zone. Um, that would be something worthwhile uh, worthwhile exploring. Um, so if you can, like that's one way. If you've got an affordable. Like check out what is the what is the the thing sold most in that area? Is it three beds? Is it four beds? Okay, great. Four beds sell the most. I want a four bedroom property. Um, what can I do? Uh, what's the most affordable one I can get? And does it need work? Um, and then you can also look at other floor plans that you can add value to. So this property here could do with a little bit of a bit of an update. Nothing too crazy. They don't even didn't even buy a floor plan with it. Um, I kind of was, avoid yeah. these. Sorry, I was going to say that, that that particular property. I could certainly see you could easily um, do do some cosmetics, sort of five or ten k at, at most, and and maybe even add sort of twenty k to to it just by just by freshening it up, like a fresh fresh coat of paint. Uh, some some uh, yeah, some you could easily just get it get the carpet steam cleaned for goodness sakes. I mean, it's not you don't even. Oh wow, yeah. mate! Look at that. So, That's. Oh, this, 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 old, this looks like an old no, one, though. Is this is, is this legit? No, like one this, that's... this is this is on the market, right? This is Bernice Petrie. Um, um, so three hundred and fifty thousand convenient location, blah blah blah. 
um, similar location, double check the flood zone, see what's going on. Um, is it near the university in the hospital? <clears throat> so, yeah. There you go. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's an issue. I, I think Joe might be, might be jumping on the phone for that one tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> Potentially. Potentially. Um, but yeah, this, to be honest, it was, um, that's really the, the one to be going for. Um, there are another couple of properties, um, but you've just got to kind of jump on the phone. You've got to talk to property managers, talk to the people on the ground. You need to go to the ground. You need to go on the ground yourself as well. Like a lot of, lot of the research and things that go into this is you use the data, you use platforms like this to understand where you're actually jumping on the plane to, but you just, you have to get on the ground. Otherwise you, you're not going to, um, you're not going to be able to understand the, the local demographics and you're not going to understand, oh, actually no one buys in this pocket here because there's a, you know, whatever, there's a drug lab or there's something terrible in that area. Well, there's, so there's, there are there's, definitely... people, there's people doing burnouts at 10 o'clock at night and you, you're not going to know that unless you either have, have, an, have some on-the-ground expertise, be that your property manager, be that your buyer's agent, be that somebody who's, who's actually sort of there or, or, you're, or you're going there yourself. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it, right? So that's the goal. Identify a growth location, buy in an area that has great income. So you want to check the rent. So if this property here, we just purchased it for 300 and what was it? 395. Um, right. So it was, that would get about $450 a week rent times by 52 divided yeah. by, um, the purchase was 395,000. That is a five point times a hundred. That is a 5.9% yield. So that's a very, oh, that's no. a cash flow positive property. So you're not, so you're not conservative though. You don't, you don't do it on 50 weeks or 48 weeks. I mean, I, I like to take a, take a bit off the top because if it, if it's still, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Like yeah. To. Um. So what we've got as well that you have to always do is use the deal crunch calculator that we've given everybody access to. If you jump on our newsletter, you'll be able to download this for free. Um, but what this allows you to do is crunch those numbers incredibly quickly. And we can see what where we're buying, what we're buying and what the return of that property is. So if we buy a property here in South Australia, it's going to be a different, um, you're going to see, we've got it all factored in. It's going to be a different stamp duty amount. So where's stamp duty? Where is it? Estimated stamp duty, Queensland. South Australia. It's a lot more expensive in South Australia for stamp duty. So we would then buy this property for $395,000. Um, we, we can put $10,000 in a renovation and probably get that up to the medium value of a three of a $450,000 property. And that's given us $44,000 of usable equity that we can use. That's assuming, uh, how, what's the deposit? Are you talking 80% deposit? 20%, oh, sorry, 20%, 80, yeah, yeah. 20 deposit. Um, after rent, it's worth that. Uh, your pest and building, you've done that. You've spent 10 grand. So all in, cash down. If oh, we lost, we lost show. We lost me. It's a bit awkward. Yeah, I just went off. I just disappeared. <laughs> 10%. If you're Could, using a 10% yeah. deposit, it drops down to $64,000. Um, and that allows you to have a 6.58% yield. You're getting 13% back on every dollar that you spend and, uh, your growth uh, on cash return is 43%. So, and it's net yielding. Oh, that's at 500, sorry. Uh, 450. And let's just say we could get it to 470, get a $6,000 positive cash flow. So. Use the deal crunch calculator; super useful, and you'll be able to crunch those deals. Yeah, we, we also you're also uh, cooking up something nicely for Sunday as well. You're um, you you you've showed me some of. The, um, can you give us a sneak? My mate, you can give us a sneak peek. Is it well? The, your um your 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 numbers that you're um you're prepping for Sunday's newsletter, Joe. Um, what's it called? What did I call it? Uh, Substack. What is, or was it equ equity? No, no, it was a portfolio. A portfolio tracker or something other. Yeah, property portfolio tracker. This is the next big thing that we're going. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, look at look at that. So this we should I should get the I got to get the link to the newsletter now. Damn it. Otherwise, well, well yeah, whilst we're doing that, Joe, do you want you want to you want to pick some questions out because there's there's about a thousand comments and and so we're going to start unless there's any. I think that that cup that wraps things nicely in a bow. Um, and, and, and we'll give, um, so I want to give Joe an opportunity to talk to what he's, uh, but, but ask some questions. Let, let's go, let's go to questions on the audience. I love questions. I love Q and A time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, I'm going to talk to this. Up. You find the questions. I just wanted to cover this off real quick. This is going to be in this week's newsletter. This is what I'm going to be working on tomorrow. And this is the overall portfolio value. And you enter in all your own data. This is just a bit of dummy data so you can see that the LVR is real screwy and there's no portfolio yield and there's no income because I'm just, you know, building all that out. Um, but this is going to allow you to see how much equity you have in your portfolio. And I know we've got people here that have one property and I know that we have a, uh, people that have 10 properties now. So if you do want to go and get access to these calculators, go to Oz Property Investors. Actually, this is something we haven't spoken about before, but we do have a website that is under construction <laughs> still it says listen to us on spotify we're not yet on spotify so just ignore that but um we are building this out we've got the deal crunch calculator you hit download now it'll take you to the page and then you can download it um the same thing will be happening for the portfolio tracker as well you'll be able to see your net income cash flow how many properties you have you set the goal my goal is three million dollars of um net wealth so based on this portfolio that I've entered in, I don't have that yet, but I'm getting there. Um, what's my total rental income? I want $80,000 in rental income. Great. How far are we at? We're zero. How many properties do I want? I want five. Okay, I'm at three. Great. Whatever. Enter it all in and, and it all spits it out there. And that's going to be on for our... Um, I popped the, pop the link. Yeah, I put the link in the in the uh, in the comments. So jump jump on that. And whilst whilst I'm doing that, let's. Uh, there was something about somebody buying a unit near the marina. I, 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 unit near the unit near the marina. Okay, investment in Townsville. I I, I don't I don't I, I didn't particularly. I don't know about you, Joe, but I I didn't dig too deep into the marina and 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 um and and units investments in Townsville. I, w I was purely looking at at Annandale. So, do you, do you have any kind of insights on that one? I, I would probably say I would want to do a lot of research on to understand um, just the strata costs as well in that one. Um, and yeah, it, it well, kind of how depends. Many There's no data in here for units at all. Yeah, um, I mean that's. I think they're talking about closer to the to the city, though. I, I know that Annandale is oh, pretty sorry. close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, when you say Marina, I'm not really sure which which suburb that would that would probably be. Um, it would maybe, be maybe Townsville two. Could be. Yeah. I, but city. um, yeah. Typically, I'm 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 not saying I, if I'm going to buy a unit, I would really want to see. It would have to be a premium. There'd have to be. Um, it have to be a low, a low kind of a, a low complex, a low low unit count. If there's a hundred or if there's even fifty in the complex, I'm saying, well, why is anybody going to pay more for my particular unit over somebody else's unit? I, I purely look at supply and demand, um, and sort of what's the owner occupied appeal as well. Somebody said, nice cow, Joe Joe Tucker does does your portfolio tracker show what's happening with your loans? Does it? I don't know. Well, I prob probably didn't. Oh, look at this units in. Townsville City, 200 days on market uh, for a one better. Two betters are 118. Three betters are 233. Like that's a that's like a long time for something to be on the market. And the median price range is 415. That has dropped from 480 at 8.3 percent. So that is something that I wouldn't be far out. It's grown 23 percent. This is all over the shop. Yeah, but if you look at number of sales, it's less less than thirty. So that can it can easily skew the it it's it's highly highly and and yeah, oh I see yeah yeah seventeen okay yeah that's not right. enough that's not enough data by a big block of units there you go yeah. um what are your two key factors for deal breakers to excluding a suburb Ooh, this, is, reckon, uh, this is a tough one to answer on the spot isn't it Joe Jeez, two what. Yes, it's asking. I, 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 I can think of one, and 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 I'll caveat this one. So for me, if if there's if there's a lot of land supply, um, and and when I say a lot of potential land supply, I, I, it would make me too nervous to be to pick up in, in in that area. And it's not to say that you can't see decent capital growth or or whatever it is you're looking for. 
Um, look, there's, there's always exceptions to the rule, but for me, that's probably one that would be a bit of a red flag. Um, for, and and what's, what's one for you, Joe? Well, like just looking looking at more of the the data around it to see what is the best suburb in that location so i think we identified here that um vincent is not the best suburb in this location so i'm ruling out vincent based on the data it's not telling me that there's a high growth rate it's also telling me that they've got a large supply of of um of uh yeah supply and demand and flood zones there you go yeah, but there's yeah. a high um proportion of that I don't think of the word social, social housing okay. social housing yeah there you go thank I you did, I, I, I didn't really want to necessarily I'm, I'm not saying that isn't a reason I wouldn't buy I mean I, I'd, I'd consider I consider it's um it all, it all kind, kind of um I'd weigh it up I suppose and sort of look at other factors and sort of see what what the trend is and I'd, I'd actually want to drive through that that area at night and and during the day as well if I was going to uh, sort of invest in an area let's see what else um for your questions for your comments um can you share? Yeah, we definitely shared the link. This calc, the calc is free, and and uh, here we go. This is funny. This comes up. Michael said, "What what what do you think of K Kerwin, uh, Kieran, Kieran, suburb in Townsville?" Kieran. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. Yep. Yeah. Good choice. It, it's good a, choice. It's, it's a slightly lower price point. Um, we did sort of we did, we did consider. Yep. Um, how do you sign yep, up to new? Sorry, made the list well there's that link there that you just posted in so go to go to whatever oz property pro, go to go to this website propertyinvesting.com.substack which jeff have posted above and then you'll be able to it'll pop up with do you want to sign up and then you say yes i do enter your email and then every week you'll get these uh these like here's the deal crunch calculator you scroll down to the bottom and then you hit deal crunch calculator there's a video of me explaining it and then you hit get the spreadsheet and then literally make a copy and then there it is. It's yours. Yeah. So, so somebody, this is an interesting question. Uh, oh, thoughts on buying a block of land for three hundred k in established area and putting a relocatable home on it for say one hundred and fifty to three to one hundred and eighty if median suburb value is six hundred and fifty k. Um, I mean, in, if if I look at those numbers, it, in in theory, it it potentially makes sense. Um, but it's it's too. I think it's. That this this question, I'd need to understand the the area and that sort of stuff. I mean, without saying, so I think if if you're saying relocatable home, how does that how does that home compare to the the quality of other properties in the area? Where, whereabouts is a block of land? What is the yes? Yeah, so there's there's a many different variables I'll be I'll be factoring in um, because in theory, yes, potentially there's 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 some value add. In, in you still have to set up, you still have to set up all the infrastructure and everything like that. Potentially, well. so we'll the services yeah so i like i would love to see what would happen like please go ahead and do that and let us know how it goes well, no, no, it's great let's, let's, not, let's not do that that's, that's not saying go and do that because uh, yeah but I, i'm i'm saying yeah go and go and consult with your experts and all that if um if somebody has considered doing that and and has done it i'm interested to know their insights i i haven't uh, it's something i've considered myself but i haven't some um, haven't executed that strategy yet yeah somebody said this any sorry good you go joe can well, I ask one of the Ivanhoe? Okay. Is, is it me or is it you? <laughs> Can I ask no. Ivanhoe, uh, Melbourne Victoria service one bedroom, service one bedroom apartment, 100% no, do not buy it. Well, maybe not 100%, know what... let's say 99% because. A one bedroom service department, it's not going to be good. Yeah. There's going to be a shit, there's going to be a lot of, lot of properties similar to that. Do people want one bedroom apartments in Ivanhoe? Um, what's the supply like? Are there a thousand other apartments on blocks coming on? Um, is there anything unique about this property? Is that there a reason why someone would want to live here? Um, so many options and one bedroom. Manage, and can actually can you even lend against it? Yeah. Um, you, you, yeah, it's, it, I think if it's under fifty, you, if, it, if it's under fifty square meters, it'd be tough. so some, some somebody yeah somebody said um, I, I think the issue with that you can you can potentially get sixty percent LVR on on service apartments. Um, it is a lot tougher. Maybe a bit higher, maybe seventy percent, but um, it is a bit tougher to get that lending because you've got things such as letting pools, all these kind of things. It's, it's just yeah, it, it it's, and lifts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, let's. There's a question earlier that I that I quite liked, um, which which I think we we can, we can address that question. Mm. One of the things I guess I wanted to talk about was like these all of these things that we're 
we're talking about here from a data perspective, like you've got to run them all through and they all have different weightings and scalings against each other. So like you've got vacancy rates, days on market, average vendor discounts, the stock on the market, um, what's the online interest, the, the gross yield, the demand and the supply, like there's a whole heap, but then they all have different ratings and value against each other to see what is actually um, so you've got to do the you've got to do the hard yards and do the data and do the analysis and see what suburb is performing, what suburb is not performing, and then compare them against each other and cut out the ones that are not relevant. And then you'll be left with four to five suburbs. And then you go to those locations and get on the ground and find out. Speak to every property manager. Speak to every person on there. And you can see why people want to, you know, don't want to be doing that because they're professionals and they don't have time to be messing about. Was the anyway? So sorry, I went on a rant there. Sorry. Was there any other regions examined before deciding on Townsville? What's the difference made you eliminate them to focus purely on Townsville? Fantastic question. $64 question. $64. Well, it's usually a $64,000 question, but yeah, I just wanted to throw. Oh, okay. um, do you want to you answer that one, Joe, or do you want me to? I think no, give, it a, give it a go, mate. You go wild. Treat yourself. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, and and full full props to Joe. He he kind of came up with this. His, this is mostly his brainchild. I don't want to take. I, I came along for the ride. Came along for the journey. But to answer the question, yes, there were some other areas that I, I don't. I don't want to throw them out because we may have future deep dives and and maybe because if we start throwing out, if everybody will buy it up and it won't be. Um, I'm not saying people buy the areas. We suggest they shouldn't. Um, but but yes, there were others. The thing that ruled them out is is that we I, I didn't necessarily feel comfortable that I understood them as potentially as much as I don't necessarily. So I think there's there's other locations that we'd look at. Um, it was purely then we wanted to say, okay, well, there's a lot of infrastructure going in here, um, and I didn't look too deep into the other areas. So maybe there were it was infrastructure. There's population growth. There's there's, there's some other kind of contributing factors, and and a life in Ennerdale had that sort of um, had that sort of higher income sort of uh, story as well as a diversified area of income. Not to say the other areas didn't have that, but I just think it, it ticks um, some of the boxes straight away. What do you think? Yeah, Sarah? it it wasn't the hard, it wasn't the easiest price point to come in at. Right, it's very easy. If you told me, show me a six hundred thousand, we are oh, going yeah. deep. Six hundred, seven hundred thousand. I'm going to show you some incredible areas that have amazing data as to why they've grown and why they're going to continue to grow. When we are buying three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars, you are that's a price point where it's a little bit challenging to we're going to take a little bit more risk. Um, but we also want to hamper that risk by having a, a better rental return. So when you start to look at like the only other places that I would be able to think of is Perth. But we're going to do a proper data deep dive on Perth as well. So I didn't want to do it for this one. Um, and then some areas in Adelaide, but they get very regional. So Townsville being the fourth, 14th largest um, town with the billions of dollars going into it, um, it's going to be at that price point the biggest, the biggest winner. Um, that's, that's how I got to, got, we got to that one. Not to say that, yeah. yeah. Not to say that there aren't properties out there. Um, would love to see a suburb deep dive on the five hundred, six hundred thousand dollar range. So would I. <laughs> so yeah, would they, I. They obviously didn't vote for it. They didn't vote. The people didn't vote. <laughs> Somebody also would, would 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 like to see another presentation. Top service for capital growth in each major city and area. Jeez, that's that's a, that's a lot of um, that's a lot of deep dives. Yeah, this is a lot of deep dives. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see. I, I liked, like, uh, sorry, Mr. Starter. What's the name of this website? Can you save this? In, oh, we definitely can. Sorry, that, I, I, I just saw the question. I popped it up. Um, what's this? Pro, what's this program called? Uh, site login. What program. Uh, must must have been the the thing you're looking at. Uh, oh, this one is called suburbsfinder.com.au. There's a guy guy in the group actually, um, Gilbert, who is on here, and um, yeah, super nice dude. Created this platform. Loves data runs the data like it really is helpful to be able to crunch the numbers a lot quicker um and maybe there might be there's more stuff coming so he's got like development applications on there he's building it out it's actually really cool check it out it's kind of um enjoyable to go through um any other questions have we missed anything else on here jeff I'm just I'm, got I'm any scroll, other scrolling, scrolling through this now. Yeah, look, we 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 we'll, we'll keep. There's over 100 people watching this session, so we we will we'll be, um, we can answer. What's oh here we go. This is an interesting one. 
Jeez, I, I don't, I don't know if we've thought. I, I don't really necessarily have too many thoughts on on these. Um, I know, I, I, I do see people talking talking Rockhampton. Um, that's a very anecdotal. Have you looked at any? Have look, you looked at Rocky, Joe? No, no. I mean, like it just doesn't pass the it doesn't pass the test. Like, like when you start to do those those higher level filters, um, it just doesn't jive for me when there's other places. Um, what are, like have you have we already talked about those high level filters? You're talking about the the four the the, the square. Is that what you're talking about? When you, what, what filters are we talking about? Like um, yeah, like like the. the like where's the better opportunity? Well, for me, Townsville has a better opportunity based on like the the, the growth, the uh, inventory levels, the supply, um, the medium house price, and also the yield. So the, those things are balancing a little bit more than Rockhampton, and also the infrastructure and development. They do have some stuff going on there, um, and it's a nice place to live. Um, but I don't know if it's going to be billions of dollars to be able to justify why the growth is going to continue there like it's beautiful think, and it would be great to live by the beach i think your poon um that's uh that's, that's just up in- from that's just up from um all the Rocky. old rockies yeah, yeah yeah so i think it's probably a similar what, what about cans yeah cans an issue one let's just throw out the states uh <laughs> do you consider income that's a good one Consider income as in the income of the of the area. Is that or I imagine? That's well, I think it means like I, I I imagine the income of the property. Like that's that's where your uh, that's where this kind of works quite nicely is because it's got a yield. Like that's what I like about Townsville. It's got the yield there. It's got the yield play, and it's it just balances. It. Like it's it's not going to cost you anything to hold this thing. And if you can buy really well, if you can buy a property that's under market value and and then be able to pull out forty thousand dollars like we did on that example, um, then you've got your you've got half your deposit back. You've got a place that's looking after itself. And this prop this area hasn't had a growth cycle for since two thousand and seven. Like yeah, somebody said population income, so yeah. Popu- exactly, right? This is the what what was it on the I'm forgetting all these numbers that we threw out here. Um, two two thousand two thousand and uh, two thousand two hundred fifty. Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah. So the fourteenth largest city, and it's the eighty second most affordable location. So how can that like, that doesn't balance out? <laughs> so it's going to have to. What actually? It was talking about the incomes of the people. Where are the incomes yeah, of the people? It's on about slide fourteen. Oh really? Oh yeah. Yep. No, yeah. Ah uh, here. Ah. Uh, uh, fourteen. Next one, mate. No, but it's not on there. Oh, now you're uh, talking about the, the incomes of the so high income households more than two and a half thousand two and a half thousand per week. Uh, yeah, I actually had another. I must have deleted oh. it. Oh, or is okay. it this one? No, there was another slide that talks about um, uh, the income of the area. Ah, um, uh, yeah, exactly you know I think I think that was yeah. That's okay. Um, so somebody, I I, I wanted to yeah somebody threw out. Do you recommend buying in Logan with a budget of 400k max, Bethania or Eagleby? I think you're going to struggle, Joe, um, with with that budget max of 400. Yeah, I mean, I maybe maybe 12 months ago, maybe 18 months ago, but now I think I don't. Uh, I was looking myself at that price. Yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a very tough one to buy in those areas. If you've got a budget of 400,000 and that's all you've got, um, I don't think you're going to be like. Let's just. Let's just do it real quick, like um, yeah. So I remember when I when I was uh, jumping on doing doing some initial searches in, in that area at that at that price point, and um, you, you want you were finding you were finding sort of townhouses, um, which I don't know. Some people are okay with townhouses. Um, I prefer something a bit more land content. Auction, auction, auction. Over offers over four hundred. So like you might be able to pick something like that. It's a bit of tough, but like if you if you've got something that you can do a bit of, that's a fine property. No, that, one, that one's been there for a while, Joe. I um yeah, so that's been oh, on the market wow. for at least. Probably, <laughs> they put the good photos up, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one's been on the market for at least probably I don't know hundred days. So yeah, there's a reason ah. that one's that one's at three ninety nine. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, low to mid fours, yeah. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough ask to get that. We actually did a, we did a did a session on that with, with Jackie. So that was a I mean she, let's see, gee, cans, 
yeah, Cairns Uni Hospital International Airport Reef. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think Cairns is probably a bit more than three to four hundred k though. I mean, there's probably suburbs in Cairns that are three to four hundred k. So it kind of depends on where in Cairns. Um, let's see. Somebody somebody asked a big question. Do we think the shift to regional areas and the growth in those areas will continue? Is this Braden? Is he is he is he trolling me by by asking this question? So he always he always bags me about. Do you think region. the shift to regional areas and growth in those areas will continue? No, this is Stephen. Sorry, Stephen. It wasn't Braden. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it depends on regional. Um, I want to hear Joe's thoughts on this because he he probably thinks about it a lot more than I do. Probably lays awake at two a.m. thinking about regional versus capital city. I know I know that's what he does. Um, so my, my thoughts are it depends on what we what budget we're talking at regional um, and and what what drove people to the area um, because if it, if it was purely affordability um, and and it's and there's not a lot else going for it um, then then what happens uh, I mean are, are people going to continue to if it's not a desirable area and it's not even if it is affordable I, I don't see why people um, are going to continue to keep moving if, if, it, if it continues to go up in price. Um, if, if there's desirability, um, the work from home, I think, is a trend that will, will likely stay to some extent. Um, so short answer, I hate to say it, but I think it depends. It depends so on the fine. area, right? But, I mean, I, I don't see this big inhale of, of, sorry, exhale of people from the cities and then a massive inhale of the same amount of people to completely throw out the the sway and then all of a sudden the regions are, are worth nothing no this trend has been happening for 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 decades um we spoke about it on the last data deep dive it's been happening quite a lot and the prices are so affordable vacancy rates at the moment are at an all-time i think it's like a 16 year low so people can't afford to like um the prices are going up um and then rents are going up as well and people are kind of getting stuck. So there's not a lot of places to rent. There's not a lot of places to live. The supply and demand is out, uh, out of kilter. There's not enough houses. The government is spending, uh, is giving 35,000 people the ability to build more properties. But we're now in a, we're in a, um, a, play, a market where uh, building a house is incredibly expensive. So builders are going under. So it's not easy just to materialize property. So for the next two years, yeah, I think we're still going to see a whole heap of prices in, in continue to grow. Are they going to continue to grow at 30% annually? Hell no. No, they're not. They're going to be growing at um, like 12%, I see. I kind of see this year at like, I, I'm probably already wrong. Like I, I think I said 16% at the beginning of the year, which is a fantastic return. But um, yeah. Is, is this the? Uh, this is an interesting concept. I just uh, do. Do you take into account neighbour price balancing? Are we talking about the? Um, the Never heard that. Term. The, I, th I think it's where you've got the the neighbouring sort of areas where where the um the the, the prices sort of push up based on neighbouring suburbs. Is that what? I yeah, like the balance. The um, what's it called? What does? Uh, it's that ripple effect. It's the ripple effect. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, does do you take into account neighbor price balancing? Yeah, absolutely. There's a property, there's a location that I'm buying in right now. The property purchase, I just purchased a property for, well, it should have been 750, but we got it off market before it went there. So we got it for 670,000. Um, and um, that location next to it is worth $1.1 million. So this area hit, just far the, the next suburb over is a lot less um and you start to see that you start to see it in the charts you see properties just getting big boom in the cities regions and then it starts to spread out um as people move so yeah definitely um you got to take yeah. that into account so when a property is like when an area has grown substantially and the surrounding areas haven't grown like look at um yeah look around those sur surrounding areas as well Oh, sure. Give up the location. Give up. I don't know that there was a location Joe was thinking with it. Was with that one, that one in particular, was yeah. You can, can, we, can we get state, Joe? Yeah. Was it South Australia? <laughs> yeah, it was South Australia. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's look. There's it's it's minus it's minus thirty k per distance. Gee, I, I, I don't know about these these kind of statistics. It's minus thirty k per per kilometer distance for Ennardale. What is that? What is that in context in relation to? I think it's talking about the DSR kind of situation. Um, yeah, I, that's that's an interesting one. I need I need to have sit down and have a conversation. But um, 
I think, yeah, there's, there's heaps of comments and it's still over almost 100 people watching. It's just crazy that people are watching this. And somebody said New South Wales costs half of Port Stevens. I think costs is, um, costs is, is quite expensive now. We're talking sort of probably median of, of around seven or 800,000 costs, is it? Maybe even more. I just, I mean, that's that's an interesting price point because, I mean, I'm not to say that it can't continue to grow, but um, what's 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 continuing to drive people to, to these kind of to those kind of areas that still that's that are that still have that aren't that necessarily that affordable? Um, cost is so expensive. I, I agree. Um, somebody said, "Enzo, how about how about the stock the stock of market? Don't you think it's a bit high? Is it a bit high? I, I didn't. I didn't. Is, is it a bit high, Joe? Yeah, it's it's higher than like. Um, like inventory, that's the inventory le- levels. Um, it should be, you'd want it to be like less than five um, and less than three, like ideally. So it's in between, it's at that kind of four area. So it's kind of like steady at that four. So there's not a major, like it's not a, it's still a seller's market. It's just not got a whole heap of pressure on it. It's not super yeah. high. Um, so I, I think, think that think- person's talking about DSR data or a location score. Yeah. Um, that's another platform that you can check out. Actually, oh, actually, let's do that now. Let's okay. do the DSR data for um, location score. So okay. this is location score. You choose how hot is your suburb. I'm pretty sure I have an account. Yeah, I've got an account. So, oh, wait, hang on. Um, so, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Joe's got his personal information. On. Yeah, just just don't save all of that. Uh there's nothing Maybe there. I have to edit, edit that one out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there you go. So it's saying here um, the demand and supply. There's the national average. It's not massive. Um, that's so that's sort of what, of... I, what I'd expect it to be. I, I didn't uh, didn't dive too deep on this one to be. But again, days on market. Are tra- no, so I'm not zoomed in enough. Yeah, days on market, up. doing the right thing. They're going down. Stock on market. Actually, much lower than I expected. Um, that stayed the same. Online search interest, it peaked a little bit over there. It's starting to taper off. Vendor discounting. This is actually quite interesting. Um, it dropped dropped down and stayed down. So that's a good sign. You want the vendor discounting not to be climbing, but to be dropping off. It means that the vendors are getting a little bit more. Uh, they don't have to. Rental, rental um, years not dropping too much. Vacancy rates kind of gone, gone up a little bit, but still quite low. SRS, yeah, typical value, yeah. So they look talk about a lot of a lot of information there. Um, let's let's yeah. wrap up with one or two final questions. I'm just mindful we're only at two hours, um, and Joe spent heaps of hours already prepping for this. So somebody spoke about well, well while we're we'll have one final question probably this, but somebody asked about Burp and Burp and Gary. What are your thoughts about on Burp and Gary? Because that's in a, in the Morton Bay, which you know probably know a little bit about. Is, is it becoming too expensive, Joe? No, no. Burp and Gary is is getting so. Actually, perfect example is the ripple effect. Burp and Gary and Caboolture are hit by the ripple effect. What happens is people think that they need to live in you know Brisbane City. They think they need to live in you know the surrounding towns like um, the hills. Uh, they want to live in you know Bracken Ridge, and they want to live in all those type of areas. But um, those prices, you just can't afford it. Like we were buying in areas and we like it was the property was on the market for 550 it went for 652 um so people that are normal everyday folk like i can't afford 652 so i'm going to go to the next step up and they go for a drive and they go to a place like burp and gary and they're like oh my gosh there's a lot going on here this is actually really nice i'm happy to live here and again keeps getting pushed up as the prices people get priced out of where they are they get pushed out further and further and um, yeah, Burp and Gary is a great little spot in in Queensland. You got to do a lot of research, so like you got to make sure you're getting in the right little pockets. Same with Caboolture. Caboolture West is getting built out massively. Like there's going to be thousands of new properties coming on, but there are areas where you can't build any more properties, and it's a good place to buy. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think. Well, unless there's, uh, we've we've still got ne- over nearly ninety people on here. So if there's one final burning question. It doesn't have to be about, about a location. It can be about. Um, I suppose I was going to say anything, but um, yeah, throw one final question, or I'll, I'll have yeah. to. Um, have to yeah, start next time up. I think, I think we'll we'll do another data deep dive. Um, I want to do another data deep dive on um, the Perth market because I feel like we've got a lot of people from like 
the uh, the east uh, the eastern states, and they don't really know too much about Perth and the reason why. So, if you guys want us to do a data deep dive on Perth, let us know. Throw in, like, we'll do a post probably, or, or just pop in the comments. Do you actually want to see Perth? Because um, there is some interesting stuff going on there. Population is absolutely out of this world. Um, it's obviously not grown too much since COVID, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, out of there the is world, some... indeed, indeed, Joe. It's a different country. It's cut itself off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, um, I but we'll it. do a full-on data deep dive, and we'll get um, yeah, we'll get a little bit more prepared and dive dive on in. Oh, so one you said, what, what's, the, what's the minimum yield? Um, I, I think that, as in the other property you look at purchasing, I, I think that really depends. I, I think it's hard to put a blanket rule unless you want to put a blanket rule, Joe. No, I mean it depends on the area what what you want it to do. Like if you're buying in if you're buying in Townsville, you'd want like a five five percent yield. If you're buying in if you're buying a seven hundred thousand dollar property in South Australia, you'd want like a four percent yield, a four point two percent yield because you're getting that growth. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, there we go. Price range for Perth. Let's let's kind of make it. It can't be below four hundred because that's going to be hard. I mean, you can we'll do. Buy. We'll do a. I'll, yeah, we'll pick. We'll pick it. We'll pick. It'll be. Yeah. Why do we get? We're not a democracy here. What are we doing? Letting people well, no, decide. We are, the number? No, we are. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Next, day, please include two price range 300, 300 to four hundred and oh. below three hundred. Jeez, I don't know. I don't know. I, if if I, I, know I, if I, I, I probably that. would be cautious buying below three hundred. Yeah, so. I'd be very cautious buying three. I'd end up with a townhouse. Buy a townhouse for under three hundred thousand. Like I was just. I, I bought a client a not, townhouse. Not advice, folks. Um, not advice. Yeah, um, but still, you can get great deals. Like there was a property that that sold in the complex for four hundred and fifteen thousand. We secured ours for three hundred eighty five thousand. That's a good deal. Someone said uh, make make miracles happen. I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to. I, I don't do. I don't do miracles. Uh, I just. I, I, I like to. I like to manage expectations. So, so Joe, you you spent yes. you spent probably a lot of your waking hours working on this. So I, I appreciate it. So. If, if somebody says, look, you know, all these hundred data points and all these um, all these kind of rent, how much rent, uh, how many people want to rent a room? It's just too much for me. I, I, it's, I'm, my head's exploding all these data. And they just want somebody to say, okay, I, I've got somebody, I want somebody on the ground or who knows kind of the, the, on the people on the ground. How do they, how do they find, where, where's a good place to go? Who's, who's a person to speak to for that? I think you know somebody. <laughs> the handball, the handball, Jeff. Yeah, well, the thing is, you can do a lot of this stuff yourself. It just takes a whole lot of time, energy, and, and resources to be able to do it. Um, but this is exactly what I do in my business every single day. So I buy investment-grade properties for people that are secured in those four circles with a high income, that are under market value, that are in a decent, a very high growth location, um, and that have value-add potentials. So that's all we do every day. I find investment-grade properties and save people tens of thousands of dollars. So yeah, if you want me to purchase a property for you, I will go ahead and do that and I'll find you a cracking deal and you won't have to waste all your time um, and headaches talking to real estate agents. Um, you haven't even hmm. told us, it's called Property Principles, Joe. You haven't even-, you haven't even Oh, the business. The yeah, the business name, name is name. Property Property Principles. Now, I only work with five to eight clients at a time. That's why you don't hear me banging on about the business in the group. We're very selective of- who we work with because we can't because it's very it's it's not one of these large scale businesses where we get a hundred you know a thousand leads in and we're just pumping through shit stock i was very very uh intentional on doing uh, doing that so if you do want to book a call if you do want to have a chat and um if you are looking for investment properties then jump on the website and we are able to do that for you make your next purchase smarter harder put your name in put your email address in put your phone number in we'll chat within the next 48 hours and um we can help you find find a property um and do we have oh. so we had we had we had one more question um which i don't, I don't know I'm, I'm not a, i'm not a demographer and i um but yeah definitely I, I i see how joe works on this so um and, and he's, he's kick, kicking goals well it's not just it's, it's that but it's also like dissecting all of the suburbs like i've got it you've got your like i've got my own internal platform that i use that allows me to look at all the data and cut them all up into different so rather than trying to go like th this is the challenge that we have with these tools is they're all free like it's all free and you'll be able to you know 
you've got to pay for stuff to be able to get really good content and you've got to create your own stuff if you want to put it all in one place. So, um, yeah, we tried to make, that's why it's a, it's a little bit fragmented this episode because it's like, it's hard to get all the, everything that you need in one place and not paying for it. So, but we do want to make it so you could get the info. It's just going to be scattered throughout lots of places and you can kind of make it work You can get a good, you can get a decent result. Yeah. So um, somebody asked, so Gillian asked, um, will it be recorded? Absolutely. It will be recorded to watch later. And I've dropped the, it'll be on our YouTube channel, which, uh, so some, this is, this is a question we'll finish out just over the two hours. So yeah, lo love, love your work, Joe. Keep it up. Um, Thanks, mate. Um, is there a trend to people wanting to rent with less gardens and maintenance so happy to have smaller blocks? Mm. I don't know. That's a hard one. I, I, I didn't think about this before I put it up because I, it's hard for me to tell that question. Like what? I don't, I don't, um, depends on the demographic, right? Mm. So if you've got busy, like I've actually purchased in talking about Morton Bay, I purchased properties in Morton Bay that have a smaller, that are closer into the city that have a smaller land size. Um, and don't have like, it's a bigger house on, on a block and it doesn't have as much, but those type of people don't want, they don't mind doing that because it's, uh, it's to a lawyer and an accountant and their one kid who sits inside all day playing, world of warcraft so those type of things it really depends on the demographic like if you're buying in townsville i would be saying get a big ass garden with a fence for a dog and you know a trailer and you know enough space for everything couple, um so you really need to tailor it to where you're buying it's you got to buy you've got to buy the best property at the best price in the best location to suit the person suit the rental market there yeah yeah, and and that that's something that I think on at least every second week or maybe even sort of more than that, you see people say you have to understand your demographic. Like, who are you buying the property for in in that area? If you're buying, let's just say you're buying an area where families live, why you buy, why would somebody consider buying a one or two bedroom unit? Because if you've got it's it's yes, some families maybe may live in a two bedroom unit, but but the vast majority probably won't. Um, so it's about understanding what fits the demographic in that area. Um, which is which is hard, which is hard to do at face value. You need to to have lots of conversations and 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 um, do, do the hard yards yourself to some extent if you're not willing to um, to outsource. But yeah, yeah. Well, a big thank you to everyone that that sat on here, everyone that threw in comments. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed doing the research for this. Um, it was a little uh, it was a little last minute. I think we could have definitely performed a little bit better on this. That's that. I think we could have gotten a little bit deeper speak, into. Speak for yourself, Joe. Come on, mate. I, I was, I was up to. Yeah. No. Fantastic. I, yeah. No, we, we both did fantastic. You're too hard in yourself. I think, I think, I think we, uh, I think we underestimate. Um, look, there's, yeah. Of course, you can always do more, Joe. I, I, I was, I, I was pretty happy. With we'll come in most. strong. We'll come in strong for the WA one, and then you guys can compare from there. Um, but yes, thanks for everyone being a part of this group. It's awesome. I'm seeing so many people. Like, you know, people don't have this type of community in their real life. How many people do you know that are like, yeah, you know what? You did really well. You bought a property and you made $70,000 who can actually congratulate you and say, well done. Like it, it doesn't happen in the real world. There's, it's a little bit, uh, it's kind of tall poppy, but we try and celebrate all the wins. So thanks for being a part of it, guys. And thank you, Jeff. Um, uh, it's been you. an awesome thank session. You. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, let's finish oh, off. Let's go buy a property in Townsville. <laughs> Hey everybody.